All right, welcome everybody. This is Nick with uh, the Desolate Star game uh, from ZeroTechnologies.net LLC. Um, what you're looking at there is Fallout 4. For those of you who have already played it, everybody was just like, "Oh God, not a Fallout 4 video." Uh, it's not actually. It's uh, for Mechanics Monday for all of you indie developers out there. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is um, what I'm working on right now. Actually, I'm in the process of doing is building basic mechanics to snap objects to one another similar to what you have in Fallout 4. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to find the right friggin' block. Uh, so what we're setting up in Unity right now is very, very simple. There's only three objects. Uh, they're all cubes. Make the project a little bit easier to manipulate. Um, and I'm going to show you what it looks like here in Fallout 4, how we want it to act. Um, and then we're going to go back over to Unity, and I'm going to continue working on it uh, in a developer's vlog style video. Uh, I'm not very far into the development, so it'll be easy to go back over it and then kind of explain where I'm at and where I'm going. And then you get to watch the rest of the freaking video uh, while I <laughs> finish making the mechanic itself. So ideally what we want is to be able to place an object and then... In Fallout 4, once you place one object, another object appears on the scene. It becomes immediately placeable next to your original object. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that the game object in the world is snapping to the mouse position. Wherever I look, up and down, it's going to go the best that it can, okay? So, now, rigid bodies and colliders and all that aside... Now, I can't throw this through the floor. That means that if we wanted to copy this mechanic exactly, we would have to create some sort of mechanic to stop that from happening. Most likely, a simple, basic collider. Okay, so the other thing to keep in mind is as we're moving very, very close to the block that we've already placed, see how it snaps in place and it's very, very beautiful right there? That's what we're looking for. That's the main mechanic that we're after, okay? We hit one key, and it places it down. And then it creates another game object on our mouse, and it goes through the same process. And we can repeat this process all day long and to create some Godzilla buildings, something like that, right? Some crazy stuff. So the other thing to keep in mind is that we can also snap... Well, I apologize. Let me correct myself. I'm using a mod that allows you to snap uh, blocks on top of each other. And on every single side I'll come over here and snap technically to the bottom now one could argue that it's perspective that it's actually that the bottom brick is actually trying to snap snap up to the top one or you can say that the bottom brick is trying to snap from the top one either way you want to look at it but either way you can snap it to the bottom so if you think about a cube if you look at this one in particular we have essentially six sides the four around it and then the top and bottom uh, faces of the square, right? So we have six total ray casts that we are that we're going to do, at least in the the way that I'm designing the mechanic. Um, it's totally just one of probably a hundred different ways that you could do it. Um, if you know of a different way and you know a better way, I highly encourage you to do it. And I also encourage you to to, to post a tutorial uh, for other indie developers to learn how to do it also. But anyway, uh, continuing on with what we're doing, we can build up infinitely. We can also do this fun mechanic where we can move the mouse wheel up and down. Up zooms the object out. Scrolling down moves the mouse, the game object towards us, right? So we definitely want that mechanic also. Uh, because we don't want it stuck static to the camera. Uh, let's say, actually, let's do this. So we'll place that. So that's the default. That's the default distance from the camera for Fallout 4. Uh, which, it's not really close, not really far, I mean, it's kind of, you know, decent distance. But let's say if I can't get, if I can't stand in this particular place right here, let's say I can only stand, let's say, actually right here. That's just, that, Let's say that's as close as I can get to the wall where I'm building, right? Actually, we'll move back a little bit. I can't get there, so it's snapping to the front, but it's not going to snap to the side unless I can zoom the block out, and then, of course, rotate it a little bit and then place it, right? So we definitely want the zoom in and out, and we also want the rotating mechanic that we have here. Now, I don't know if there's actually a way to reverse um, rotate the object in Fallout 4. I have not really necessarily tried, except for right now. 
control alt shift and don't don't really do anything but it doesn't really matter because like most of the game objects are squares anyway uh, it's a <laughs> very high-end version of minecraft design here so uh, anyway i'm gonna get out of here and quit fallout 4 and it should load unity right behind it hopefully there we go there's our code that i have so far i'm gonna do a general scroll through and kind of explain what i have so far uh, and then we're going to continue working on it and uh if you want to skip to the part where it's actually working and it's fantastic and it's beautiful as soon as i get everything done i will put a uh, annotation about this point um, to let you click on it and then you can skip through all the coding and the vlogging and so forth and just see the final code and make it work but anyway this is where i'm at so far so let's let me actually show you um, what it looks like in game and I've got my stats window up at the top right there so currently uh, if you do nothing and you're just kinda of mousing around or whatever no big deal right I do not have a player controller currently in the scene um, it's a very very simple scene there is a button up there to create a block but I haven't coded that yet uh, so we'll get around to that later also um, all I have right now is there's these three blocks and what we want uh, essentially is to be able to take this block here which I think you can still see my mouse cursor take that block there and essentially just slide it right on in there and make it snap to this area and then hit a key and it's considered a placed object right no big deal so what I have so far is you mouse over it it doesn't do anything right you hit the E key it will taggle it, taggle it will toggle <laughs> the uh, boolean on the script for this object to make it movable okay it's just a boolean and then the the square or the cube the cube game object will follow my mouse around and keep the distance from my camera the Z distance from my camera perfectly now I've already coded a zoom out I don't know if you can see that very well and a zoom in which we can zoom in the game object actually past where our camera is so we definitely don't want that we're gonna have to set a minimum um, and I think it's because of the way I have it coded. Um, I can't remember why it's doing that, but it actually will go way, 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 way past where the camera is. Alternately, it will also go off into infinity if we so continue to scroll. We don't want that either. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to stop the. You know, we don't want to allow the player to be able to place things. Um, you know 16 miles away from where they're standing but we also don't want him uh, him or her to be able to place things behind themselves either where they can't even see what they're doing so that's a note that we have to make that uh, alternately I do not have mechanics set up yet for snapping so right now it doesn't really do anything however I'm gonna switch back over to the editor now the game's still running now I'm gonna move it around in the game so you can see but I'm actually gonna clear my console down here so you can see now as you can see our trigger is actually already on because we have the object is placeable right every time I whoops <laughs> I kind of just screwed myself up there uh, every time I click inside the game while the game is running our is movable trigger uh, I think you can see it on the right there is actually true that's what we want while this is moving around and after we've hit our hotkey one time the trigger is movable yes right we want that true so I've already toggled or created the toggle for to turn it off which it does not seem to be firing all the time I think it's because it's in fixed update so it is now not movable and it's also not locked to my camera or my mouse hit it again it is right so that's it right now if I hit the key outside of the brick it doesn't do anything because it's not hitting anything that is considered a build object that's my tag that I have on these so uh, I have to do some some updating uh, moving some code around for that probably but as you can see it doesn't snap but you can see in the uh, console down there our snap build cube 1 and build cube 2 build cube 0 and build cube 2 all that is all firing as true because of the colliders that you see there now I'm going to hopefully not screw this up um, as you can see uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's green lines coming off of all of my cubes there. Those are Raycast debugs. They are super, super helpful, at least to me. 
because that's where our ray cast is starting is the the transform position of the cube uh, this one's going out to I think let's see X positive which is I think left and then right top bottom front is Z forward back is going that way right so what we want uh, ideally when this box right here uh, when it hit when it collides with these two boxes as you can see it ticking away right there right we want it to snap in place oops sorry I'm kinda of dragging and failing we want it to snap in place right there so then in the game it would look essentially close to that but it'd be better because it would be an exact point right it'd be zero uh, probably zero one zero um, for XYZ zero X uh, one Y one unit up and then Z uh, zero because it's right there on the Z line or the zero line uh, so we haven't coded any snap mechanics and I also haven't coded any mechanics uh, to create new cubes in the scene because I haven't finished creating my build object uh, cube uh, prefab so this is the part where I'm going to continue coding and working and try to speak aloud so that you guys can hear what I'm thinking so to speak um, you won't hear everything I'm thinking because I'm a I'm pretty much a dog but anyway um, if, if at this point you want to skip it that's fine I totally won't blame you this is probably gonna be another 50 minute video I will try to keep it down less than that ideally because <laughs> hopefully I'll know what I'm doing but if you want to skip it it's totally cool I will like I said I'll put another annotation in there somewhere um, to skip this part and then go all the way to the end where everything's working if you don't see an annotation here it means that I didn't get it finished in the 50 minutes that I wanted to get it finished in and then just click next and go to the next video <laughs> anyway so we're gonna stop the video and I'm going to start working on the code where I left off I came up with the idea that while the game is running and the object is being moved around by the player the is movable trigger does need to be true it is movable however I do not want it to be true when it's locked in place I need something to say we can move it around in the world but we also need something to say it's temper it's it's in a good place it is placeable um, it's placeable right now and then when the ray cast actually moves like if I move my mouse like right here within this box I want it to, to stay where it is but when I move my mouse out of it I want it to unlock and say it's no longer in a placeable position and unlock it so the player can move it around uh, with the mouse however they wish so we need uh, two booleans for that I'm actually gonna restart Fallout 4 to kinda demonstrate that technique a little bit more uh, and I will promise I won't play too much and I'll just kinda let it load in the background as best I can and I think that's why I originally loaded Fallout 4 to begin with was to verify that what I was thinking was a reasonable concept um, and I'm gonna put a break in the video right here and just cut this loading screen out Okay, so here we are. We're in the game. I'm actually going to break my game a little bit and jump through the wall. Do, 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 do. TGM, TCL. Whee! Crunch. <laughs> Alright, so we're, we're going to test. Oh, let me get rid of that guy right there. Actually, you know what? I got a better gun for this. Uh, let's see. 
My character's not very powerful, so deal with it. Oh yeah, right in the face. All right. Now that our fun's over. Okay. Five E. Uh, set game hour to eight. Oh, uh, another thing: if you see this happen when you're messing with the weather, just do it again. It clears it up. Uh, come on. All right. So all we're gonna do is basically verify what I'm talking about with the raycast, and then we'll move on. So we place our object. And we have another one we want to snap. All right, so we have our object moving in. It snaps. See, it even goes so far to say that if you move the mouse even slightly away from the center point, it breaks the lock. So what we're wanting to do is move... I don't know if this will work or not, but what we're wanting to do is actually move... Yeah, it didn't work all the way outside of our objects. We want our raycast to go out into world space before it unlocks. See how... Man, that's that's like a really tight control right there. But I would imagine that that does allow for a little bit better placement in the game. Um, I know that you can do some pretty crazy stuff um, with Fallout 4 in the building. So what we're going to do is try to maintain... That's super weird. So it's like whatever, wherever the point is on the block when it snaps, plus or minus a certain amount from that point will unlock it. But we want to go outside of the game object entirely, and um, then it'll trigger our unlock. So let me just save it right here and pause it just in case we need it again. I'll just leave it open. Uh, so what we want is when we move our uh, mouse outside of the game object's area, when the raycast doesn't hit it anymore, then it will unlock the temporary lock, the uh, good placement lock, and then move it where our mouse is again, and then we can, you know, place it a little bit better from there. Uh, so I'm going to set this back to negative 2, uh, Y1, and Z0, okay? All right, so back over here in our code, we have, uh, let's see, we have it as a temporary hold, but I don't like the variable name. So let's call it, let's call it good placement. All right, so I did say I was gonna go through my code so far. Um, what I have right now is just public camera main cam. Um, this is done from whatever your main camera is. Um, I will put a shout out to Quill18 for pointing this out. If you delete your main camera and then try to put another camera in and call main cam, it will fail because of the tag cam tag main cam up here. On the new one, we'll switch to un uh, unallocated or untagged. So just make sure that your main camera, whatever it is on your player or otherwise, is set to main camera. Um, however, on our objects, we're dragging the camera onto it anyway, right? It's no big deal. So we're dragging the camera on there. Um, but even <laughs> even though we're doing that, we're still calling camera.main.blah, blah, 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 blah here. So we actually want to do uh, this. And I think I have it in a couple other places around here somewhere. From camera. Yep. Dot screen. Yeah, okay. So that's working. Okay, so that's right. And then I thought I had it somewhere else. Oh, there it is. Alright, so anytime you make any changes, always test your crap. And we'll go over to our, my other monitor. Wait for the game to load. Of course, I'm running Fallout, so my RAM is just getting eaten up like anything. Okay, so that still works. Mouse works. Bam. Unlock still works. Oh, we fired an error. How did that happen? Main cam. Okay, let me switch back over to Unity. Show you guys that. And we'll see what we got here. So, ray from cam, raycast from camera, from cam equals main cam dot screen point to ray. So, why did we get a null exception there? Interesting indeed. Okay, let's figure it out. 
Okay, you're gonna hit play. Go back over to the other monitor. All right, so it immediately fired off one time. If we move it, it fires again. So let's change that one back to our main cam code. You know what, let's just do this. Let's just do it the right way. And we'll call, uh, what is it, camera.main. Right there, right there. And I think that's it for that. Now there is faster ways to edit uh, variables in MonoDevelop. Um, I'm not very good at those, so I'm not going to try to even try to show this off because I'll fail. Waiting for the game to load. Okay, there it is, and that works. Zoom out, zoom in, clamp down. Good to go. Excellent. No errors. For proof, look, no errors. Okay, fantastic. So, okay, uh, one couple of things we needed to do. Um, Let's just go ahead and say notes to self. Uh, limit, actually, do block code here. Whoa, limit z plus z minus when object is being moved with scroll wheel. Okay, so we need to do that. And we need to build snap mechanics, snap to mechanics and we also need to build uh, raycast out of game object bounds uh, mechanic all right so what we're talking about here is we're just making some quick notes as we go through the video because I'll probably forget uh, we're gonna limit how much the player can scroll the object to and from them uh, maximum and minimum maximum and at minimum, sorry. Uh, we're also going to build our snap to mechanics so one block will snap to another. Then we're also going to build our ray cast out of game objects bounds mechanics. Mouthy, but anyway. That's talking about moving the ray cast outside of the game object and it needs to set good placement to false. That way it will fly around out in space the way that we want it. Okay. So, the easiest, the easiest of these mechanics is probably going to be number one here. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, <laughs> I keep forgetting to do this. I'm sorry. So, here's the entire code so far. Uh, when we start up, the camera, the distance that the camera is from the game object in this particular scene needs to be found. Because our, our camera is currently static, it is not being moved with the player or WASD or anything like that, we can get a static distance one time from the start of uh, when the game loads and the game object loads, it'll fire this one time. No big deal, right? This will have to be moved to... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and test this. Let's move this under our input and see what we can do here and distance should be a global variable it is okay so our uh, three variables um, actually we'll go ahead and start from the very top I am so sorry guys uh, public float Z step this is for our zoom in and zoom out zoom in and zoom out of selected game object okay now this is only relevant after the player has quote unquote picked up the object, the movable object, okay? Now, here's the kicker to all this <laughs> that I just now thought of. In Fallout 4, I cannot move an object unless I'm in build mode. That is essentially, I hold down V, now we're in build mode. You see how that's highlighted right there? No matter how we look at it, it's all highlighted and all pretty and everything. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's one big, giant, freaking Boolean. <laughs> So I just now thought about that, so we'll have to do that. Um, so let's add a mechanic down here and we'll say um, boolean for build mode mechanic. So the reason that that is, that is important, switch back over to Fallout. If I am just running around and I am just blasting everything, just 
shooting everything and everywhere and all of a sudden crap I hit my my E key in this case I don't want to grab a block and, and try to kill enemies that would be a nightmare <laughs> we would not get anything done at all we wouldn't build anything and we wouldn't kill anything so we do need our build menu controller uh, which will add to item number four so serialized field this lets you show private variables in the inspector in unity uh, which you see right here the Z step and is movable and as soon as everything compiles it should show the next one I would think oh uh, good placement is false why is that not showing which is really odd okay so we will figure that out later and then float distance is actually not showing up either um, so some things I I haven't read through the manual on serialized field but some things will not show up but I bet we can do something like this we'll have to kind of play with this a little bit see what we can and cannot do let's see what happens so our Z step shows up and our is movable shows up Z step shows up because it's public and then let's say uh, good placement here and then we'll comment out this and see what happens at this point, I'm just kind of messing around, then I'll go through the rest of the code. I promise, guys. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm just kind of learning as I go here. Okay, there it is. So, good placement and it is movable. So, we're going to leave this comment line here so we know what uh, good placement actually is for, uh, the variable. And um, then we'll say we'll leave those comments there. So, float distance is for the camera. Um, that is to keep the block object at a certain distance from the camera. Uh, so, as soon as we pick it up, we don't want the block on top of the camera nor do we want it flying out into space at some like 600x 600y god awful weird position in universal space so far away that we would need the Hubble telescope to fucking find it uh, anyway going down to the update now this is messy messy code if you have a better way of doing multiple ray casts and catching what fires please for the love of god point me in the right direction because I hate the way that this looks. This is so messy. But anyway, we'll go through one raycast and then you can just copy the code for the rest of it. So raycast left, raycast, I'm sorry, raycast hit, left hit. So what this is basically saying is anything that, um, if physics.raycast left ray, which is right here, ray, left ray, transform position is this game object that the script is on, which is uh, one of the squares. Um, which I mean, we may actually have to change that, uh, to be honest, so it doesn't fire in all kinds of god-awful directions. But anyway, uh, vector 3 left, it's going from the object to the left. This debug shows us the line, the raycast line, I'm sorry, the raycast ray, coming from the game object going out into universal space. This code right here is what tells us if that ray hits anything of importance. When I say of importance, it means we can set an if statement, which I have here, to tell us when it's actually hit something relative. Uh, or I'm sorry, hit something important. So when the left ray hit, when the left ray cast fires, if physics.raycast left ray out left hit, which basically says it goes to this ray cast hit, saying if this left ray has hit anything now it's only going to extend a distance of one unity unit not very far right we don't want it to go very far we don't want them to be placing game objects you know like let me uh, go back over to fallout and I'll kind of explain now we'll go back into our build mode now this is a buildable object right here in front of us um, I'll go back over to floors and we'll find something flory uh, okay so we if we wanted to the way we have it now is we have one unit one unity unit now this is a little bit smaller than one unity uh, one unit right here what they have in fallout so we may shrink ours a little bit to match it kinda depends on how it functions when we actually get it all done but what I'm talking about is if we set the unity uh, units and the raycast to like 16 
it would say that it's placeable to that square object way over there if I set the object right here. It would literally snap all the way to this box right here. Does anybody see a visual problem with that? <laughs> that would mean I could literally place this block, I would try to place it right here, and all of a sudden it would just disappear and snap right there. And I would be looking right here like this going, what the hell is going on? Where's my square? And it's right over there waiting to be placed properly. So you definitely want a short, um, what do they call it, like a raycast unit coming off the side of the block. And I will show you what that looks like in Unity. Go ahead and start the game. What you're looking for is green lines. See those green lines coming out of there? That's one unit in Unity, right? And as we move it forward, watch what happens to that green line. See how it turns red right there in the center? That's what that's what we have coded. Now, red is usually denotes bad. Okay, that did pause. Red usually denotes bad, so we probably want to change this to cyan for blue to tell us, okay, everything's good to go. Or we could change our green to red and red to green, whatever. <clears throat> so it's green right now, saying it is placeable, whatever. We move it in here. Why did it not turn cyan? Oh, right, because I haven't changed all of them. That's my bad entirely. Uh... Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Oops. Okay, green showing that it hasn't hit anything. Cyan for when it does. Okay, makes pretty good sense. So let's go ahead and change our green uh, to red, saying that it's not placeable. You know, kind of kind of give us a visual reminder as we move forward. Uh, as, as we develop the game a little more that, you know, red is bad, cyan is good, or blue or green or whatever is good. That's what we want. So again, uh, picking up where we left off, if this ray cast left, the left ray, which is extending, actually, let me go back over here. <clears throat> Come on. If this ray right here, which is left, if left ray hits anything, send that information to left hit and extend only one uh, unity unit which is it's kind of backwards when you're thinking when you're reading it like that but we're humans we're logical and we're stupid so if this hits anything it's gonna send the information to left hit now this says if that left hit collider dot tag equals build object that's what we want we want it to hit something that is another build object that's what where this is where we're going to build our snap code. Okay, this is where it's going to say um, this build object can snap to that build object. We want it to snap to that build object. Okay, now in Unity we can do this any way we want and build it any way we want. We can make anything snap to anything, right? So let's go in here and I will show you all one thing that we can't do in the game. So we have doors. And as you can see at the top of the screen there, it says snap door, snaps doors to frames. Well, I don't see any frames, like door frames. So in the way that we have our code, this door would snap right next to this concrete block. Well, in Fallout, it doesn't do that. It's placeable right here. I can, I can put it anywhere I want in the world. Just like that, right? That is placeable. That's legal. That's, that's good game development or whatever you, you, you want to call it. It's good playable design. I can place this door any friggin' place that I want, but we don't want it to snap to the concrete. Right? Because that just doesn't necessarily always make sense. Now, do we want the hinges to snap to the concrete? Maybe. So, see how this is now placeable? But if we spin it around, it's not placeable. Because that's the door handle side, that's the hinge side. Right? So we can do that and come over here, and the door friggin' functions like normal. Even though it's broken and it's in the concrete. But you see how it doesn't snap to the concrete. See? It does not snap anywhere in the concrete. It visually snaps through right there. It visually snaps through it, but that's that's a trick of the camera and a little bit of lag. I apologize. It's getting some uh, FPS drop. But it doesn't snap to the object the way another concrete block does. See? It doesn't snap. 
So that is specific code that we would have to design in Unity to say if it's a buildable object and some sort of god awful convoluted is it a good neighbor object meaning concrete blocks to concrete blocks doors to door frames windows to window frames Ugh, let's not think about that right now <laughs> so uh, basically this is our you know this is a this is a good snappable object that we're moving up against let's go ahead and fire our snap code in this case we're just doing debugs we're changing the, the color of our debug uh, draw ray, um, which, as, as I showed earlier, changes it from green, uh, now red, to cyan, saying that this is a good trigger. Um, this is good, right? This is what we want. All this code is is other raycasts, but I'll kind of scroll through it so you can kind of give an idea of what's going on. It's this six times. Up, down, uh, left, right. Let's see. Let me go back up here. Left, right, up, down, forward, and back. That's all of the raycasts that are coming off of one single cube. Kind of sucks, doesn't it? However, think about what we were just talking about with the door. Let's go back over to the game somewhere over here. Okay, so let's go back into build mode. We'll go to doors. Okay, and we'll get an actual real door. So, notice it doesn't snap here, but it allows it here, right? That's okay. So, let's, um, actually, you know what? Let's do this real quick, and I'll, it'll make a little more sense. So, walls, we'll just snap a wall up here and make it look stupid. Okay, and then we want our door. See how that just snaps right in there? Boom. Now, let's flip the door around and watch what happens. It still snaps in there, right? So, that probably, well, at least it, it tells me that there's, there's, two, there's two probably triggers that are in there that are allowing this door to snap either way. That way or that way. You can kind of see on the door handle there. I don't know how good that looks in the video. But you can snap it either way you want. So that's, that kind of tells me that they're using triggers on this one. Uh, or, I'm sorry, colliders on the doors right there to let the door snap the way that it wants either way that you want it. But again... It doesn't allow it here, right? So there's probably one collider on the hinge side, and that's it. And it says if it lines up with that, snap the door where it needs to go. And if it lines up with that trigger on that side of the door frame, line the door up where it needs to go. So we may do that for s smaller objects like doors and various other things. Uh, we may do some measure of collider talk so to speak, between objects. Uh, but we'll come back to that at another point in time in the uh, life cycle of a desolate star. Um, so all this is is uh, the different ray casts that are coming off the blocks. I don't think that I have the game running. Yes, I do. So um, forward, back, left, right, top, bottom. Everybody got that? So Z positive, which I believe that is. Yeah, Z positive is considered forward, Z negative is backward, X, uh, an X negative, yeah, X negative is left, X right is right, <laughs> Y positive is up, y, y negative is down, or in our design of code, top and bottom, okay? So we'll go back over the code. So that's all that is right there, is just the rays, um, and this is just the debugs that you see when the game is running, and then there's this statement for every direction left right front back top and bottom okay so we're gonna skip that part this is the is movable trigger this is still in the update uh, function which fires every frame uh, this is if is movable basically equals true we'll just do that for argument's sake if is movable equals true then we say we can now move our object around in the world that's just a debug it's just telling us on console output that this is firing. Vector3 uh, position equals input mouse position. This is where your mouse is on the screen. In a way. Don't quote me exactly on that, okay? Uh, Position.z equals distance. This is what we set from the beginning with our... Da -da 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 -da. Nope, actually we moved it, didn't we? 
Distance, uh, where did we set that again? Oh my gosh, I'm losing it. There we go. In our fixed update, uh, when we hit our um, input.get button make movable, it sets our distance to the camera right here, right? Now we're doing this because, now, I'm just now thinking about this again. We actually need to move this, not when we hit the key. We need to move it right here. Because the player will be moving around in the world all the time. So let's test it real quick. See how bad this breaks it or how hilarious this is going to be. Nope, game's not running yet. My bad. Okay, so that definitely breaks it. Let's uh, restart it and try this again. Okay, is movable. It just constantly zooms at us for some reason. Oh, right, 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 because it's updating the distance. Uh, uh, it's updating this every time this fires true, which is constantly true until we place the object, so we don't want it there. But what we do want, let's try it in update. Actually, let's just move it up here. Camera to object distance. Okay. Let's clean up our code. Test. All right. Sorry, I had the video on the game there. So um, all I did was move the distance up to the update instead of out of the uh, trigger. And it's still not working right because... It's doing it every update. We only want to do it. Hmm. Let's see. You know what? Let's try a different test, actually. Let's move it back down. Actually, let me get my code on the screen. Sorry about that. Let's move it back down under our input.get button when we hit our E key. Um, put some code over here. The e key. Okay. All right. Let's let's do some testing real quick. So, waiting for the game to load. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. E key. Bam. Movable. Can move around in the world. Now we take our main camera over here, and let's watch and see what happens. Okay. So the game object moves any way that we want, no matter what, while it is locked. But yeah, that's what we want. That's what we want. That is what we want. Because while the player is moving around, looking around the world, doing his little shimmy shimmy thing, and looking up and down. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, that does actually work the way that we want. So um, we're leaving distance here. So distance camera here. This distance variable tells us how far it is between this camera and this game object, as you saw, to keep the game object at a certain distance from the camera. So going back up here, um, position.z.dist, we just went over that. Transform.position equals camera main screen to world point uh, position. Now we're setting the z here. This is a constant thing, even though we scroll up and scroll down, it's changing it down here, which that's all it is. And this is in our fixed update, I believe, but we can move this into update. In fact, I think we had some problems with frame count earlier, or uh, lag, rather, not working correctly. So we'll go ahead and move it. Uh, so this basically increases it by our Z step, which we set in the uh, editor, or in the inspector. Uh, currently, I think I have it set to like 0.1. It's a pretty small variable. But you can set that to whatever you want and get your crazy zoom control in and out. Um, oh, too far. That's our distance. That's where the game object is when we hit the E key. Um, it gets the mouse position, Z distance, camera uh, camera main screen to world point, uh, shoots a ray out from the camera, whatever. So if we hit our E key, uh, input dot get button make movable. That's where we have it set in our input in our. Uh, editor and 
sets the Z distance, which we've already tested. That's what we want. Raycast hit from uh, from camera. So we're actually doing a quick raycast shot from our camera to the game object to set some things up here. Uh, ray from camera, main camera again, which we already changed when we saw why we did that. Input dot mouse position. So screen point to ray. <clears throat> Don't have a huge technical explanation for this other than wherever your mouse is on the screen, it shoots a ray out from there. I got nothing more than that. If you want more technical crap, go look it up in the documentation. I'm sure you'll learn more about it than I will. So, uh, I just know that this works. <laughs> um, if physics.raycast from cam out from camera, which is the ray, uh, notice we're not doing a distance. Okay? We're not doing a distance. Ooh, I just thought of something. Let's test this. So, if we're not doing a distance of any kind, let's throw their camera. Let's do it negative 50 some. Somewhere around in there. Let's see what happens. As soon as we hit play. Okay. So let me switch monitors. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> How insane is that? We are 50 units away and we're now moving an object. Can anybody say, we don't want that? Yay! <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and fix that. So. <laughs> What happens is a ray is a point, a point in space to infinity. Um, so let's just say, I don't know, 10 units. Let's test that and see what happens. So we're going to take our main camera, negative 12, which should not be uh, good. What happened? Where's my cameras? Yoink. All right. Actually, it looks like it's going to be hmm, negative 20. Let's try. Oh, right, because of the rotation. All right, so that's dead on. And we'll set this back to 0, 0, 0. Zoom in. All right. So we want, let's try negative 12. This is what it looks like from the camera point of view in the game. I know you can see it in the inspector, but it makes it just a little bit easier here. <clears throat> so we'll kind of fake it for a little bit. So negative 12 should not allow us to move that object or grab that object. And we can't. Now let's change it to negative 10. Actually, you know what? Negative 9. Just to make sure. Man, it screws it up for some reason. Where did it throw it? Interesting. Okay. So main camera. Let's move it up a little bit. Let's see what happens. I think we just created ourselves a bug here. Okay. Nine. It throws the game object into a very ridiculous space. So we only want that raycast to go a certain distance, but it seems to screw up the rest of the design of the mechanic. Something else has broken it. Not that. Yep, we have broken it horrendously. What did we do? Oh, because we moved this into update. That's why. We did move all this. I don't think it's actually the problem, but let's move it back under fixed update and just reset the code back to where we knew a working state was, and then we'll go from there. Nope, still broken. Why is it throwing it way off into hell? Let's 
What did I change? Interesting. Now let's hit Control Z a bunch of times and see what happened here. Okay. Okay. There we go. I have no idea what I accidentally moved, but I'm now wondering why that why that happened. So let's go ahead and test this again. And I'm already at the 51 minute mark, so I apologize that I didn't get everything done the way that I wanted to. I will stop this video if we do this test. Come on. Okay, so we are, our main camera is at what, 12? Let's do nine. We'll have to move it down a little bit because we can't see the game. And that works. Okay, so that does work. So I have a feeling that I think I accidentally moved this garbage on accident. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. Uh, if you want to continue the series, definitely feel free to. And I will get all of this up to, uploaded to YouTube at some point um, as I go through them. Thanks for watching.